Welcome to the Statistic Unity YouTube channel. Today I'm really excited and happy to share with you the first ever collaboration on this channel. Joachim Stork from Statistics Globe has made a tutorial about how to create bar plots in R, showing coding examples for both base R and ggplot2. Make sure to check out his YouTube channel, Statistics Globe. It's got an incredible amount of resources, so subscribe to that channel if you haven't already. Check it out. There's a link in the description, and there's also a link to his website, statisticsglobe.com, that has also an incredible amount of tutorials and resources. So check that out. Make sure to subscribe to his channel. And now, thank you again, Joachim, for this contribution, and let's hand over to him. Hello also from my side and thanks a lot to Wolf Riepel for the opportunity to speak on his channel today. So in this video I will show you how to draw bar plots in the R programming language. And the tutorial is structured into different sections. So in the first part of the tutorial I will show you how to use base R to draw bar plots. Then I will explain how to use the ggplot2 add-on package to draw bar plots in R. And based on this, I will then show you how to draw more advanced bar plots, such as stacked bar plots and group bar plots. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you different examples and the first examples of this tutorial are based on the data frame that we can create with lines two and three of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data frame object is appearing, which is called df1. And we can print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line four of the code. And then you can see at the bottom that we have created a new data frame, which contains four rows and two columns. And the first column contains the values that we want to draw in our bar plot. And the second column is the group indicator which shows the different groups in our data. So if we want to draw these data using the basic installation of the R programming language, then we can apply the bar plot function as you can see in line six of the code. And within the bar plot function, we need to specify the values column in our data and we need to specify the grouping column in our data. And between these variables, we need to specify a tilde. And then we also need to specify the name of the data set in which our values are stored. So in this case, our data set is called df1. So if you run lines six and seven of the code, you can see at the bottom right of our studio that a new bar plot has been drawn. And as you can see, this bar plot shows the four different groups in our data, a, b, c, and d, and the corresponding values. So the values five, two, seven, and two. So in this first example, I have explained how to draw a basic bar plot with default specifications. However, base R already provides many different alternatives on how to modify these types of plots. And I want to show you a few alternatives on how to visualize our data using base R in the following part of this tutorial. So first I want to show you how to draw a horizontal bar plot, because as you can see right now, our bars are shown vertically. And we can do that as you can see in lines nine to 11. So in lines nine and 10, I'm using basically the same syntax as I did in the previous example in lines six and seven. And then I'm adding to this the Horace argument and I'm specifying this argument to be equal to true. So if you run lines nine to 11 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that our plot is updated. And this time our bars are shown horizontally. Another often very useful modification of such graphics is that we can add colors to our bar plot. And we can do that as you can see in lines 13 to 15 of the code. So in this case, I'm specifying the color argument to be equal to the values one to four. I'm using these values because our data frame contains four different groups. And by specifying these values, I'm telling R that each of the groups should contain a different color. So if you run lines 13 to 15 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that our plot is updated once again. So this time it's again shown with vertical bars. However, we have added colors to each of the bars in our bar plot. And as you can see, each group in our bar plot has a different color. 
In addition to that, we might want to add a legend to our bar plot and we can do that as you can see in lines 17 to 19 of the code. So in these lines of code, I'm using the legend function. Then I'm specifying that I want to draw this legend at the top right of my plot. Then I'm specifying the labels that should be shown in this legend. So in this case, the labels should correspond to our grouping values. And then I'm specifying the filling color of my legend items to be equal to this range from 1 to 4 that I have also used before to draw our bar plot. So if you run lines 17 to 19, you can see that a legend is added on top of our plot on the top right of the plot. So in these first examples, I have explained how to draw a bar plot using the basic installation of the R programming language. However, I also want to show you how to draw such plots using the ggplot2 add-on package, because the ggplot2 add-on package is a very powerful and popular package for graphics in R, and for that reason, usually people prefer to use the ggplot2 package instead of base R. So if we want to use the functions of the ggplot2 package, we first need to install and load the package, as you can see in lines 21 and 22. I have installed this package already, so for that reason I'm just going to load it with line 22 of the code. So after running this line of code, we can use the functions of the ggplot2 package, such as ggplot and geombar, as you can see in lines 24 to 27 of the code. So within these lines of code, I'm specifying that I want to use our data frame df1. And then I have to specify the aesthetics of our plot. So in this case, I want to show the group indicator on the x-axis and the values on the y-axis of the plot. And I want to draw a bar plot. And for that reason, I need to specify the geom bar function and the stat argument to be equal to identity. So if you run lines 24 to 27 of the code, you can see at the bottom right of RStudio that a new bar plot is shown. This bar plot shows the same graphic as in our first example with base R. However, this time the bar plot is shown in this typical ggplot2 style that you might already know from other types of graphics. So the ggplot2 package also provides many ways on how to modify this bar plot and in the next lines of code, I want to show you how to draw a horizontal ggplot2 bar plot. And the only thing that we have to change compared to the code that we have used before is that we have to add the coart flip function to our code. So if you run lines 29 to 33 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that our bar plot is updated. And this time the bars are shown horizontally. We can also add colors to our bar plot, as you can see in lines 35 to 39 of the code. So in this case, I'm specifying the fill argument within the aesthetics of our bar plot to be equal to the grouping column. So if you run lines 35 to 39 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that our bar plot is updated once again. And as you can see this time, each of the groups in our data is shown with a different color. And you can also see that the ggplot2 package automatically adds a legend on the right side of the plot, which identifies the different groups in our data. So until now, I have explained how to draw relatively simple bar plots without any subgroups. However, often you will have certain subgroups in your data that you might want to visualize in your bar plot as well. And for that reason, I want to show you some further examples which are based on a more complex data set that contains main groups and certain subgroups. So for these examples, we first need to create another data frame, as you can see in lines 41 to 43 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data frame object is appearing, which is called df2. And we can print this data set to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 44 of the code. And then you can see that our new data frame contains eight rows and three columns. The first column again is called values as in our first data set. However, then we have two additional columns and the first of these additional columns is called main group. This is the major group in our data 
and then these groups A, B, C and D are divided into subgroups A and B. So a very popular way to visualize such subgroups in a bar plot is by drawing a stacked bar plot. And we can do that as you can see in lines 46 to 50 of the code. So in these lines of code I'm using the df2 data object that we have just created. And then within the aesthetics of our plot I'm specifying the main group on the x-axis of our plot, the values on the y-axis of our plot, and I'm specifying the fill argument to be equal to our subgroup color. And then as in the previous example I'm using the geobar function to specify that I want to draw a bar plot. So if you run lines 46 to 50 of the code you can see at the bottom right that another plot is appearing. This plot is once again showing our four different groups A, B, C and D on the x-axis. However, each of the bars in our bar plot is divided into two subgroups, into the subgroups A and B, indicated by red and blue. And you can also see that the legend of our plot is reflecting the subgroups instead of the main groups as you have seen in the previous plots. So as you can see in this stacked bar plot, each of the bars has a different height. And sometimes it might make sense to scale the bars to the same height in a stacked bar plot. And we can do that as you can see in lines 52 to 57 of the code. So the only difference in these lines of code compared to the previous example is that I'm adding the position argument within the geom bar function. And I'm specifying this argument to be equal to fill. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the bottom right that the bar plot is updated once again. And as you can see, our bar plot still shows the four groups and the two subgroups. However, all of the bars are scaled to the value 1. You might prefer to scale such a bar plot to 100% instead of the value 1. And we can do that by adding the scale y continuous function to our code. And within this function, we need to specify the labels argument to be equal to percent format. So if you run lines 59 to 65 of the code, our plot is updated once again. And as you can see, the bars look exactly the same as before. However, this time the y-axis has been changed to percentage points. So as I have already mentioned, stacked bar plots are a very popular way to visualize subgroups in your data. However, there's another alternative and this alternative is called grouped bar plot. And I want to show you in the last example how to draw such a group bar plot in R. And we can do that as you can see in lines 67 to 72. So in these lines of code I'm again using basically the same syntax as before. However, this time I'm adding the position argument and I'm specifying this argument to be equal to dodge. So if you run lines 67 to 72 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that another type of bar plot is shown. And this bar plot shows two bars for each main group. And these two bars are representing our two subgroups A and B. So thank you Joachim for this tutorial. Make sure to check out Joachim's YouTube channel, Statistics Globe. Also check out his website, statisticsglobe.com. And yeah, head over there, um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All the best. See you next time. Ciao.